Welcome to my top 5 list for the jobs in Frontlines and Rival Wings. First and foremost, these modes are pretty casual and all about having fun with friends, so you should play whatever you enjoy. This video is to showcase the strong points of powerful jobs this patch. If a job is not listed here, it does not imply that it's bad. Feel free to share your opinions and questions in the comments below. I respond to all. Starting off the list, my number 5 is Warrior. Tanks and melee have a strong advantage in these modes. They take reduced damage and deal increased damage to make up for the fact that they are in close range and will be swarmed on by the enemies. Warrior can take advantage of this especially by using the skill Nascent Flash with the additional skill Retaliation. Nascent Flash heals you based on how much damage you deal. Retaliation hurts the enemy when they hit you. If you combine them together, you heal when you take damage. If you do this in a crowded group while also spamming AoEs, you'll deal a lot of damage and be very bulky at the same time, often landing a lot of kills and assists while being a good frontline for your DPS. Another strong tool for Warrior is Home Gang. Home Gang will bind the target in front of you for 3 seconds. This will allow your teammates to jump on that target and kill them very quickly. Home Gang does not build resistance like normal bind, so you can use it on anyone at any time. This is especially powerful in the Hidden Gorge. In the Hidden Gorge, if you home gang someone onto the train tracks when the train is coming, they will die immediately when they get hit by the train. Lastly, Warrior has Inner Chaos. Inner Chaos lowers the defense of enemies, so put this on mechs, players, towers to help make them squishy and easier to kill. It's great to have one tank in each alliance for these modes. My number 4 pick is Scholar. It provides shields and its cogitation to allow your teammates ability to push with less worry. The strongest thing about the job though is that it does damage while healing. The job is designed for you to cast Biolysis or Broil to get Fairy Gauge and using that Fairy Gauge for Dissipation to heal with Lustrate and Indomitability when AoE heals are needed. It sounds a little confusing, but you should be using DPS spells for your globals and healing spells for your off globals when possible. My healer guide has a scholar section if you want to check that out for more details. Another strong thing about scholar in Frontlines and Rival Wings is that it has strong synergy with medical kits. Medical kits are enhanced by abilities and buffs that increase healing potency. This includes dissipation, largesse, vocalization, and even battle high. This allows Scholar Potions to heal you for full health just for one when you're at critical HP. This can allow you to be bulky and operate as a tank and even distract enemies. In Frontlines, it's a good idea to have two healers, one Scholar and one other. In Rival Wings, you can have two healers or one depending on how your team will play. My number 3 pick is Ninja. Healing is the most important thing in PvP. Nobody does that better than DPS. On kills, your team gets points, the enemy loses points, and it allows you to push through objectives. As mentioned before, melee DPS get buffed in these modes. All their attacks do extra damage, including their range attacks. Ninja is also good at AoE situations. You can use Bunshin with the Death Blossom combo, you can use Health Rock Medium when you have Gage, you can also use the 3 Mudra Fire attack. The strongest factor to Ninja is Assassinate. Assassinate does 3k damage if the target HP is low. It also resets on kills. The damage is increased further by the melee bonus in these modes. Battle high, soaring and rival wings, sheer will buff and rival wings, the additional skill faint, and of course any buffs your teammates give you or debuffs they put on the enemy. This allows for assassinate to do really high damage and be chained over and over if people are low enough. Another strong point of Ninja's kit is Trick Attack. Trick Attack is a debuff that lowers the enemy defense. Ninja is the only melee who gets a debuff like this. You can hide and be sneaky and put it on the enemy healers, or you can put it on vital targets that need to be killed quickly like mechs. The only weakness in Ninja is that it's not very bulky and needs his teammates to support it. My number 2 is White Mage. White Mage brings a lot to the table in large scale battlefields. For one, it gives a lot of raw healing and regen healing. It's very common to see White Mage as the top healers in the scoreboard because of all the healing they do. White Mage is also really good at building battle high and soaring. 
If a teammate scores a kill with a regen buff on them, you will get an assist for that. In PvP, you build one lily every 10 seconds. You use those lilies for regen spells, and regens last 15 seconds, so you can pretty much have a regen on full time. After using 3 lilies, you get access to Misery. Misery is a high AoE damage spell, and combined with Scythe's AoE damage, you can use this on a group of enemies to score kills and build battle high. Building battle high early as a healer will allow you to have even more healing numbers and damage done. Lastly, Dia is a strong healer debuff. It does defense down to a target and you can put this on vital people or mechs in rival wings. This is better than buffs like Astro cards because all 23 players in your team will be able to take advantage of Dia. Now time for a quick honorable mention, Summoner. Range GPS are more of a supportive slash utility role in these modes, but if you have a strong frontline of tanks and melees, you can be great at finishing people off with your range attacks as Summoner. The strongest part of Summoner's kit is Pain Flare AoE Stun and Caster Limit Break. Caster Limit Break lowers the defense of everyone by 25%. This is drastic and can change the tide of battle very easily. On the Japanese data centers for frontlines, it's very common for them to use countdowns and sound effects to do AoE damage. Having a summoner for this is very powerful. The strategy behind it is to kill them and stun them before they get a chance to heal. Summoners can also lower their defensive enemies with Phantom Dart Debo. Using Phantom Dart and Comedier on targets that need to be killed is extremely powerful if you have the melee DPS to take advantage of it. Now time for the number one job. My number one pick is Dragoon. Right now Dragoon is S tier in all PvP modes. It does good damage, it has mobility, it has range attacks, it has AoE attacks, and it's bulky with the skill Bloodbath. The Bloodbath additional skill heals you for the amount of damage you deal. So if you deal AoE damage, you get healed for every person you are hitting. Dragoon hides damage attacks such as Gearskogo, Star Diver, Nastron, Sonic Thrust are all AoE and range. So basically, you can engage a group of people and do massive damage and healing at the same time. If you synergize this with other Dragoons and even pair Dragon Sight, you're dealing a lot of damage and kills and that's the meta of this patch. When you don't have Bloodbath ready and you can't engage, use Piercing Talon to attack from a far range. Also worth noting, Dragoon gets a Lucid Jump, which removes Heavy, Find, and Home Gang effects if you do get caught. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed or learned something, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I play Final Fantasy XIV PvP every stream, so come by twitch.tv slash brianricardo if you have interest in live content. My Discord schedule is hidden gorge for all data centers, so make sure to join if you need wins or you enjoy the mode. We have over 10,000 members and we would love more to join. Check out the channel description and thank you for watching again.